go. So let me start sharing my screen again. So let's get back to let's get back on track here. Okay, so just at a glance, um, the course text is called ISTE Standards for Educators. Uh, it is, in fact, the cover for the book is right there. Uh, it's not a very long book. In fact, if you give me one second, give me a couple seconds. I have it right here. There we are. Much better. Let me get in front of it so you can actually see it. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually produced by ISTE, which will be, is the, um, they really deal with the technology standards uh, associated with integrating technology into classrooms and professional organizations. Um, the book um, is like about 15 or $16. I, uh, I try to find books that are affordable, but also practical and useful for you. Um, it is definitely user friendly. Uh, it will uh, suit you well because the entire course is based on the ISTE standards for educators. Uh, if you, I think they do have a digital version, or you can get a um, you can get a paperback. It does start. I do have readings starting almost immediately on them, so definitely get a hold of it as soon as you can. Uh, but uh, definitely ISTE standards for educators. Again, not very expensive. You can get used, you can get new, you can get digital. I don't, it doesn't bother me either way. Uh, the syllabus. So I sent out the syllabus several times throughout the announcements and stuff like that. Anytime you want to um, download a copy of it digitally, you just go to the welcome section in Brightspace. So I just entered my Brightspace class right here, clicked on it. And if you come, I always I always click on content. And it gives me a nice table, kind of like a nice um, table of contents on the left side and the content on the right. That's how I end up uh, uh, exploring and navigating Brightspace. I find it the easiest way. If you click on welcome, it will provide you uh, a link to the a Word document for the syllabus. And I'm just going to download it because the preview, it's nice. It does offer a preview, but I find all of the graphics end up getting all messed up. Okay. So let me bring it over here. No, 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 that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this right here. Oh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Here is the... Here's the syllabus. Let me get a little bit bigger. There we are. Uh, so course started officially on Monday. It'll end uh, March the 16th, which I think is a Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we use Brightspace for our course uh, materials, uh, and it is a pretty intricate website. I try to make navigation as easy as possible. So that's why um, I use Bright. Uh, that's why everybody at the university uses Brightspace. I'll talk about anthology, which is you might hear it as anthology or chalk and wire. They're kind of the same thing. I'll talk about that in a moment. There is my email address and my phone number. You're more than welcome to contact me. Um, just you know, call me. Uh, you can call me anywhere from like you know, pretty much nine to like six or nine to seven p.m. That's fine with me. You know. Call me throughout the day. If you text me, I'll get back to you. Just when you know it's when it's um, when I'm able to. I will say this: I'm on email all the time, every day. So emailing me is probably just as good as getting a hold of me. I won't bore you to death by reading you the course description. Um, there's the information about the book again. If you need the uh, to get it off the ISBN, um, you can get it off of Amazon or the bookstore or whatever. It's fine by me. Scrolling down. Okay, uh, attendance. So we do not have official attendance because uh, we're not a face-to-face -face course. We do, uh, there is a, since this is an online class, there is a different type of attendance and that is participation and being present in the course. What I mean by present in the course is that you don't kind of drop off the face of the earth that you are, 
you know, constantly visiting Brightspace, doing your work, uh, maintaining your schedule. The nice thing about an asynchronous class, which is meaning that we don't have to meet at the same date and time every week, we can, you know, you can, I give you announcements, um, you know, I open up materials and resources and give you directions and you go through and experience them at your own, kind of like your own pace. So that's a benefit. You get to do this, you know, we're all busy, you know, I, I understand what we're all busy, but you kind of, you can kind of plan your schedule out um, as long as you're, uh, for the most part, as long as you're adhering to the due dates and stuff, you can plan this out to the best of your abilities and not miss out on life. So um, that's definitely a pro to um, an asynchronous course. And since I know that some of us do like kind of like that face-to-face -face presence, uh, I at least offer throughout the eight weeks, I offer two of these face-to-face -face sessions. They're voluntary. I don't force anybody to do them. If you don't want to, you don't have to do them. And I also, of course, will record them. So this way I can share them for anybody that's not here. Okay. Um, so uh, what I'll do is for attendance, I just, I basically check and make sure that you are, um, that Brightspace actually tells me if you're present in the course, if you log in, if you do any of the activities, it actually, you know, it, it collects data in that sense. So I'll be able to tell if you're doing work or not. I do accept work late, um, but only about only up to one week late. Uh, and then I re reduce the score by one uh, letter grade. I'm trying to find anything important. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go through each course assignment a little more in detail. There's like a really in the syllabus, there is a really brief description of each assignment. But I don't want to go over that right now because, again, it's like. It's like, uh, you know, trying to drink out of a uh, fire hose. It's way too much information at once. I'm going to show you some of the useful things. The syllabus is definitely one of the useful tools in the course because it kind of outlines everything for you. Um, there's a course schedule that kind of goes through the due dates, the topics of the course, what module you're working on, the date of when you're supposed to be working on it. You can see right now you're supposed to be working on module one. Tells you what readings to do, what module to experience, and when are the due dates. And I even tell you where to submit it because most things will be submitted to anth uh, the anthology portfolio, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but there might be additional activities that you have to do inside of Brightspace. So as you can see, I try to keep you all organized. I try and give you as much information as possible and just in case i also put this kind of due date i try and collapse it into a nice due date chart for you so this way it kind of helps you out a bit to stay organized um go through some of the other important things um technology so i did put a section here about ai i know that for instance with chat gpt and bard and all the other ai tools that are out there now uh, it's wonderful for teachers. It's really become helpful. It's it's a very useful tool. I do ask that um, the nice thing about this course, it's not really heavy into research papers. In fact, you don't actually write a research paper. Um, there are going to be projects and activities where I'm going to actually say, hey, if you want to use AI to assist you in some things, you can. Um, however, if you're going to use content from... Um, uh, um, you know, those large language models like ChatGBT, I do ask you to cite them. So um, again, there are some, um, you know, there are some policies involving AI, just be respectful of them. Uh, and if you have a disability, please contact Disability Services. It's the direct, the director, it's the Office of Director of Accessibility and Health Promotion. Okay, um, on the syllabus, there are some more SOE policies, School of Ed policies, so the e-portfolio. So let me give you, um, do you all have your e-portfolios by any chance? Have you gotten it yet? Okay. Um, Betty, have you gotten yours yet? Ariella, have you gotten yours yet? So the so let me give you a little bit of a background on what the ePortfolio is. So you may hear a term anthology or chalk and wire. Um, yes, I do have mine. 
Perfect, perfect. Um, um, but I have a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have a question. I see you. You add something more in it, like we uh, even though you had you already had it, you need to do some extra thing. I see when I go to the syllabus, I'm not sure if I do need to do something. Uh, I think uh, you're just saying if you already have an e-portfolio, do you need anything else to do anything else? Yes. No, if you have an e-portfolio already, if you have Chalk and Wire or Anthology or whatever, you know, it's uh, you might hear them both uh, referred to in the same way. No, it's fine. You don't have to purchase another account. You just have to purchase the initial account. Um, okay. and that's fine. Yeah, it's... Um, a lot of times this is the very first course people take and um, our advisors do a wonderful job of, um, of introducing everybody to a lot of policies, but occasionally somebody might, you know, come on board a little late or they just, uh, they may have just missed it in their orientation or whatever. Uh, the e-portfolio policy, I just have to share it a lot of times because I also give you training materials and resources in this course and we use it a lot in this course. So this way, it, it really does kind of help train you and prepare you for the rest of your coursework, which will use anthology. So Betty, just long story short, um, you don't, ha as long as you purchased your account, you're fine. Um, that's why the very first announcement I gave you, I think it was about two weeks before the course started. I made sure to tell you that you have to make sure to get an anthology account. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, so anyway, the information's there. I made sure that it will, I made sure that it goes out on, um, I'll make sure that it goes out on each announcement for the first two weeks of class. This way we can just make sure that everybody's purchased an account. Um, I don't handle the accounts. Um, my colleague, uh, Professor Madeline Ball does. Uh, there is a link if you need to purchase it. Um, the e-portfolio is a, I think you buy a license for five years, it costs $150. Uh, I think that's the cost of it. So, um, and that will last you for five years. You don't have to keep on, you don't have to keep on paying over and over and over again. It's a one-time fee for five years. Anyway, so I wanted to kind of introduce you to Anthology. Um, we're going to be building something. Uh, so it, inside of Brightspace, I'll show you when we go in there, I give you a tutorial. So if you purchased it before and you need to set it up on your, um, you've gotten the account and you need to set it up. There is a module that walks you through how to set it up. I'll show it to you when we go into Brightspace. Are there any questions? I'm going to stop here right now. Oh, um, one last big kind of thing. Um, communication. Please make sure you're checking your Notre Dame email account daily. The, um, if you email me using like your school account or Gmail or something like that, I'll respond to you. It's that uh, the the important thing about constantly checking your Notre Dame email is that it's connected to Brightspace. So anytime an announcement happens, I can contact you. It contacts you through the Notre Dame email. So please make sure that you're checking that. It's also School of Education policy that I use the Notre Dame account. So long story short, please make sure you check your Notre Dame account during coursework or during the time of this course. Okay, any questions on the syllabus while I get Brightspace ready? Okay, let me continue on. So this is Brightspace. So Brightspace is the learning management system. Uh, in here, this is where I give you course content. Um, you're only going to turn one assignment in using Brightspace. The reason being is, is because um, it's just kind of a pre-assessment for, uh, for the course. Uh, you'll see on here on the left, there's modules. Right now, you'll see module number one's open. You'll also see that there's an anthology module right here. So if you click on that, it gives you step-by-step -step directions on setting up your e-portfolio. I give you a video introduction. So if you purchased it, you need to set it up. There's a nine minute video that walks you through the entire process of setting up your e-portfolio. So if I come over here, 
You saw that on Monday, we opened up module number one, which is the very first one. There are seven modules um, that are associated with the seven ISTE standards for students. I'm sorry, ISTE standards for educators. So that's how I structured this course is we deal with one ISTE standard uh, at a time. For So module one will focus on mo uh, ISTE standard one, and you'll learn about each one. So ISTE standard one is learner. So it talks about how you are and explores how as an an educator in the technology world, you are going to be a lifelong learner. So the general anatomy of the modules is you'll receive a module plan. If you click on it, it basically gives you from start to finish all of the information, all the steps that you have to do to be successful in the module. Everything from the objectives, the overview of the objectives, all the way down to the directions for the assignment. Next up, each module, well, I can't say each module, most modules will also include a presentation. If you click on this link, it'll take you to a narrated video. I'd like to, I'd like to apologize in advance. I'm sorry about my nasally voice. That, that, that is, this is what I have to deal with, is my nasty voice. I'm very sorry. I apologize. Uh, so if you get bored, if you, get, if you can't stand my voice any longer, you can always read the transcripts. You know, it's just some people have awesome voices. I do not, and I, I'll i never get, you know, narrating work, and that's fine. Uh, there are links, there's resources, there's readings. Uh, if you're looking at the syllabus, it'll tell you where to go in and actually do work, uh, where to find assignments. You'll see for module number one, there was a self-assessment. So you'll see some of these are assignments, some of these are Word documents. If you open this up, Assignment number one asks you to complete this very first part of the chart. And it's asking you just to rate yourself as, do you feel like you're strong in these standards? Do you feel like you need more growth? Or do you feel like you're neutral? You're both. It's neither a strength nor a weakness. And it asks you to complete this first chart, this first part of the chart. And at the end of the course, you're actually going to complete the second part of the chart and then compare them and do a course reflection. So my hopes are by the end of the course, you're going to see a lot of growth throughout the next eight weeks. Okay. Now for this assignment and this assignment only, you're going to complete this Word document and you're going to submit it to this section right here, which says assignment, assignment number one, you'll uh, upload it to here. And uh, I will check it for you. I'm not going to grade it until the very end of the course, but I'm just going to check that you've completed it. Okay. So let me click on content one more time and show you. So starting next week, I, uh, let's see, I open up all my modules on Monday. So this way on Monday, module two will open up and then you get to experience module two. Eventually, Module 3, Module 4, all the way to Module 7. The But the anatomy is much the same. Okay. Let me go here. So I think the next thing I had, Brightspace Anthology. So I'm going to show you uh, Chocowire just for a second. Uh, just so this way you can kind of see what it looks like. So let's pretend I'm a student. I've set it up and I'm ready to turn work in. If I come over to menu, you're going to probably hit work in my coursework to enter the portfolio. Me, I have to kind of go a different route because I'm an administrator. So let me go general coursework. So all of my assignments are in the portfolio that's called general coursework. On the left side, you're going to see a, a massive course index with course names and um, assignment titles. If you scroll down to 556, 556 is coming. Here we are. Okay. Ariel, I just had to leave. No big deal. Just making sure. Okay. So if you see 556, you'll see that there's assignments right here for you to turn in. Uh, let's say, for instance, you do the search log, which is due, I think, in two weeks. 
I was like, okay, it's time for me to turn it in. You click on the name of the assignment. You will then come up here and you'll hit the submit button. You'll upload the document and you'll submit it to the uh, to me to assess it. So this is the portfolio. Uh, it's fairly user-friendly. And again, if you're ever in any doubt on what to do, you can always go into uh, Brightspace. And this very first module gives you all the step-by-step -step uh, directions. So if you click on this link, it's going to take you to the directions. Okay. Any questions on the anthology? Okay. Okay, so um, let me uh, keep going through, through here. Okay, so communication. I'm going to send you probably on average two announcements a week. I'll send you one either Sunday night or Monday morning, depending on how good my schedule is. I typically try and do it Sunday nights. I'll send you an announcement for the following week, what, what you're going to be doing throughout the week, you know, uh, the release of the next module, the, uh, you know, the names of the assignments, what to do, tell you like the status of like, Hey, this is what I've graded. You know, you can go and check basically course announcements, course news, and then what you're supposed to be doing. I'll do that. And then maybe a follow-up uh, announcement, probably by the end of the week saying, Hey, just checking in, making sure that you're on, on target. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Um, and what I'll do is I'll send it through not only the announcements page, but I'll also email it to you as well. Okay, just course structure at a glance. Remember, I said that there's seven ISTE aligned modules. There's seven, and inside each of those modules, there's a module plan that'll walk you through everything. I am going to provide you with two, at least two secret sessions. Um, that is, that I'll we'll meet on Zoom. It's voluntary; you don't have to, but I will record them in case you uh, miss it. That you can actually um, hear about it later. Each assignment will include a rubric and as detailed directions as I could. I just revised this course over the last, I guess now it's been about 16 months. And I'll say this is that each um, each course, each session, each uh, during each semester, I'm getting a lot more positive feedback for the course. People love the assignments. They say that they, it feels like it's really aligned to what's going on in the classroom. Uh, there's a lot of um, you, there's a lot of learner agency involved in this, and you get as a uh, student, you get to select a lot of you know the grade level you get to work in, uh, what you get to focus in on your assignments. You can kind of cater it if you're in the classroom already. You can cater it to the subject that you're working on, the grade you're working in, stuff like that. Um, and there's a lot of current topics as well. Um. It's also, you know, again, you get a little bit of uh, a mixture of blended instruction and also online instruction. Okay, so here's all the topics and themes. So the ISTE standards for educators, you'll learn quite a bit about that by reading the book, but also by experiencing the modules. You're going to take a look at professional learning and growth, uh, finding, evaluating digital tools and resources to use with students. We're going to take a look at digital citizenship. Computer science and computational thinking. A lot of people get really scared when they see that. They're like, oh my goodness, I can't do computer science. Everybody can do computer science. And it's not like I'm asking you to code or, you know, or somehow like, you, you know, uh, like do all this like difficult work. Everybody can code and everybody can have fun doing it. You'll learn how to screencast, do online collaboration. You'll do some rudimentary video recording and simple editing. There, of course, will also be digital instruction, pedagogy, instructional design, and also data collection analysis, instructional decision making. So a lot of good course topics for the next eight weeks. Okay, that's just that was the, all the assessments at a glance. Okay, so assignment one, I kind of went over briefly with you. You're going to just be completing the very first part of this chart. There's two parts to this. There's two columns to this chart. It's asking you just to self-rate um, 
uh, your experiences with each of the ISTE standards, your comfortability using them. Um, the first chart you're going to do by the end of this week, um, I'm not going to grade it. I'm just checking it for completion. You're going to turn this whole thing in at the very end of the course. It's going to be kind of like a post-course reflection activity. You're going to see your growth using the ISTE standards for educators um, by the end of the course. Okay, at a glance, here is the digital search log. So after you experience module two, which I'll open up next Monday, you're going to go and find 10 digital tools that you might use in the classroom. Uh, they could be tools as in digital apps, like say for instance, Google, uh, you know, Google Docs, or it could be a website like National Geographic. So you're gonna find these tools you're going to summarize the tool and the feature. You're going to evaluate the tool, and then you're going to decide how can you use this. And then you're also then going to reflect how does how do these tools help you to advance to shared vision of technology integration, and how does it help with uh, equitable access to digital tools? Uh, so this will be the very first uh, assignment. Two will be the very first one you submit to the ePortfolio. Assessment number three is the digital citizenship presentation. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick a specific law or policy that's associated with schools and technology. And you're going to become an expert on that law and policy. And you're going to beside and um, instead of writing a paper about it, you're going to create a presentation for a certain group of stakeholders. It could be for students. It could be for teachers. It could be for parents. You get to pick. But there is a presentation structure you'll follow. Uh, and there is a section on there exactly. So this will, you can use PowerPoint, you can use Google Slides, doesn't, uh, you know, you could use either one as long as I have access to it. And there's specific criteria that you have to follow to uh, be successful in it. And you can see at the very bottom, it says submit to anthology. So what I'm going to do is this, is uh, that's my, I only wanted to go through the first three assignments because that's pretty much the first four weeks of, of the class. Sorry, there we are. Um, so let me hit stop sharing. And I'm going to stop recording. Let me stop recording real quick. Where is the end record button?